Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Fear the Walking Dead. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, I thought this was actually kind of an interesting story, the way it was kind of told. It was almost like a mystery element to it, but to be fair, when you look at it from Daniel's perspective, it kind of makes sense, kind of where things were, kind of go the entire time. But I think it still kind of plays a very nice way of playing into how the episode unfolds because at first it just seems like all right everything's fine everything's dandy they're continuing to build this community and everything together but obviously you have the different groups you have sherry and roly show up you have um victor and one of his you know uh, rangers show up uh because everyone from different groups because well there's a conversation about the the spray canning people the end it's the beginning like whoever this group is obviously it's a conversation about like okay so who are they what we're going to do about them so initially it was a situation where morgan and daniel both had keys everyone had their weapons locked up there's a whole conversation between victor and daniel about the fact is that daniel is like oh Victor's like, yeah, you had us all kind of fooled for so long. And he's like, the fact of the matter is, you know, Daniel's kind of apologizing. But Victor's like, nah, we were both playing our own game on how to, like, deal with the Virginia thing. The better man just happened to win, you know? But, um, through it all becomes, well, initially, Morgan has to leave. And he ends up leaving with the rabbi because it's like, okay, they're going to go find uh, the machine necessary to check on um, Grace to make sure, like, it's, whether it's contractions, whether it's just something else, so leaves Daniel kind of in charge but now it becomes a conversation between all these different groups about like well maybe there's a possibility that not everyone is who they claim to be that maybe you know everyone starts turning on each other and even Daniel saying at one point in another we've all lied to survive in different shapes and forms so it's like can we all really trust each other is that actually interesting because once again there's so many parallels you can make to the original show as well because you can draw parallels between this current circumstance and kind of what happened with um the parallels with the uh, the whisperers because alpha was able to do what she did because the groups had fallen apart over those you know, over the time skip so it was kind of a very similar circumstance so it was a thing of like we don't know who to trust then some dynamite goes off and Daniel said oh maybe it was an accident but someone else is suggesting or well, maybe it wasn't because you had like sherry throwing accusations against west because it's like hey virginia was kind of suggesting it was you but it's like maybe she had the reasons for believing that i mean or truth be told is it's just that virginia which is very suspicious of everyone because she can never really truly trust anyone because like the way she got a, so many people people under her thumb you know it, it i don't know i don't think there's any truth to that but you know luciana's the one that also threw it out there that hey what happened in tank town kind of seemed like it might have been an inside job so you don't know i don't think it's wes i don't know if i was suspicious of anyone like legitimately my suspicions were towards sarah but i'm like i don't know because obviously it all goes to victor too because sarah's like really victor who's the one who had the guns when we're all lined up he's like yeah but who turned all those guns again because once again it is a thing that everyone that has been there has kind of done some lying in some shape or form because sarah and everything how morgan and sarah and wendell all met in the first place so it's understandable why you'd be like ah kind of like i'm not too sure about you you know and it's like oh should we listen to a damn thing that comes out Dakota's mouth this is the same woman that shot and killed John so it's that type of situation so suspicions were rising obviously Daniel had all the guns locked away but he was kind of suspicious of everyone so he's like all right I need him well because the dynamite had drawn some walkers and obviously saying the walls would hold but he just wanted to kind of have some insurances because that's who Daniel is he always has to have like a contingency but him and uh, Charlie go check out the um, guns and it's like nope they're gone, so he has Charlie start looking through people's play stuff, and then Roly finds her and is like, what the hell are you doing going through my stuff? Charlie, did you find that hammer I was looking for? So, and Daniel wanting to protect Charlie, he sent her away like he sent Grace away, because in his mind, he hasn't really been able to, like, because he feels like he failed to protect Ophelia, because by the time, after everything that went down at the farmhouse, because that was like the last time he saw Ophelia, by the time they get reunited in season three, like, she was already she had already died like he had missed her by moments you know and so he hasn't felt that since you know meeting charlie you know and so for him charlie is like his second chance it's like oh like she's become very important to him and he wants to protect her like obviously he wanted to kind of protect her from victor and stuff like that so that's why he was trying to get her away from them 
But then it was a situation of, you know, it's like, now I need her away so I can do what I got to do because he had actually let some walkers in just to prove his point because Daniel's always been the person that's like, I'll do the unnecessary, I'll do what's necessary, you know. I'll, he's always played that role and been that person. That's actually kind of like some common ground between him and Madison that they kind of had that where they both would kind of do whatever was necessary to protect their family, even if it's the doing the very, like, unsavory bits. Like, that's a commonality between them. Kind of Victor, too, but Victor does that kind of more so for himself because – that's always been the thing about Victor. It's like he, anything he's ever done has been for himself, even when he's trying to like, you know, can't, you know, a leopard can't change its spots or whatever, right? That whole um, conversation. But because um, Daniel thinks it was actually um, Victor behind everything, because when he let those walkers in, no one else had a weapon except for Victor. But Victor's like, yes, of course, I'm me. I snuck in an extra weapon because it's also like, you kind of already knew I was going to try to anyway, because you already called me out to be like, oh, and the knife too. And they're both laughing like, ah, ha, 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 you got me, Daniel. It's like, oh, because I know how much of a slime ball you are, Victor. Uh, but, you know, he locks him up. And it actually was a really interesting conversation when Daniel was like, oh, like, you want to know, like, you know, the constant reminder of the person who shot you. He pulls out that thing. Like, I think it was like a makeshift thing to kind of feel like the hole in his mouth or the because, you know, either like it punctured through some teeth or his gums or not just his like it might have done some damage to his jaw or whatever. But I think that's supposed to be like a place over holder to kind of like feeling that it's supposed to be kind of like a mold to kind of fill in whatever is missing in his face, like whatever got blown away by Victor back in season three. Uh, Jesus, it's actually kind of crazy to think. I guess because I because so much of that bleeds together because I watched so many of the seasons back to back to back. There was some like spare um, some time in between like uh, the end of season three and four and stuff like that. But still, it was like a lot of that bled together because I watched everything back to back rather than week to week like most people ended up watching the show. Uh, but it was just kind of interesting to think like, wow, that was like back in season three, Victor did that. That don't feel like that, but because it wasn't that long ago that I watched it. It was like maybe like, what, maybe like two months ago maybe I watched that or something like that. Regardless, attention and all that aside, I just think it's, it's so fascinating. And, you know, Daniel bringing it up, like the fact... Um, the fact is he's like, oh yeah, like the pain, like feel it every time he sips water, he's going to be eating soup for the rest of his life. Like he's wheezing anytime he goes to sleep that the fact of the matter is he has to like deal with the pain every time he talks and even Victor being like, whoa, like, is that for real? Like later on, he's like the pain and all that. Like he, you know, he didn't really, cause it's just like, oh, Daniel's fine and dandy. I mean, it's actually kind of interesting to think about considering like they're, they're meeting like the first time subsequently since all that, when, you know, when he uh, watched Al's tape and found out about um, Daniel. Hell, even bringing um, Skidmark, you know, um, back to Daniel. But uh, it's interesting because Daniel's one of the few people that's kind of a living representation of Victor's ways. His means of always looking out for numero uno, protecting himself. Because any other reminder of that is gone. You know, he had Madison, who would have been a constant reminder. She's gone. Nick is a constant reminder. I mean, that's how they met in the first place. Uh, was, you know, him doing his thing of like, oh, I'm looking out for numero uno. I'm looking out for me. And for, th you know, like, all those reminders are kind of gone except for Daniel. And Daniel's the best and most prime example. Because, you know, Daniel's a, an example of, oh, me lying to get what I want. Lying, saying like, oh, I know where Ophelia was as well. I did know where she was until she left. But I didn't let you know that because I needed you to help me to get what I needed to do, you know. So, Victor doing what he's always done. Kind of manipulating people to you know well like i said to get what he wants so daniel's just kind of a representation of that and it's just like staring him in the face because i guess just for him he just all oh, thought it was a okay and it's like wait you're constantly in pain and stuff like that because of something i did and like daniel holding the gun against him and being like you know kind of like okay i need to be this person to kind of get shit done so he's about to pull the trigger and everything and if morgan had showed up because even i was like would he have actually pulled that trigger? I was actually kind of nervous. I was like, there's no way he's actually going to pull the trigger. It's like, uh, Daniel likes like he might be pulling this trigger. So if it wasn't for Morgan and the rabbi returning when they did, like killing all those walkers. So now it's a conversation about like, okay, let's find the guns. Wait, Grace isn't at the shack I told her to go at? He's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. 
eventually they were able to track Grace down, her and Charlie, but they went to a cavern instead, and it's like, whoa, whoa, what were you doing in the cavern? I told you to go to the shack. It's like, no, you told us not to go to the shack, and then it starts going like, yep, I figured as much. Daniel, like the whole acting uh, with, um, acting and pretending with Virginia wasn't a hundred percent him pretending, you know, that there is something off. And then when everyone's gathered, they start going like, Oh, like kind of everyone's looking at Daniel and it's like, turns out he had the guns the entire time. It's like, well, he was the only other person that had access with the key and everything. So it makes sense, but it's like, you know, and Morgan's like, is everything okay? And Daniel's like, no, it's confusing. And so he sits down and talks to June and June's trying to figure out whether or not it's like a neurological thing, but it seems like everything's okay. It just seems like it's more of a psychological thing. Because for Daniel, it's like he's always done stuff to kind of keep himself going. He's always had something, a fight, whatever he needed to do to keep going. It was never, for the first time in a long time, he slowed down, you know? Because even before when he was on his own, it was still a constant thing of, well, I gotta survive. So he's always had that to kind of focus his mind, keep his mind distracted. Now he's slowing down, living the good life, you know, caring for Grayson or Baby and caring for everyone else. And that ended up being a conversation from Victor, too, where he was like, why do you care so much about these people? Like, half these people you don't even know, and like the other half, you don't really, it's not like you can really stand them, so why? And even Daniel, like, from the future saying, like, at the time I couldn't end answer Victor's question, but now I can, because he ran away to Los Angeles to, to you know, raise Ophelia, to kind of have, like, the, to escape his old life, pretend like it didn't happen, but he realizes that his entire life in Los Angeles was a lie, because it was him pretending his past didn't exist, he wasn't who he was, and he lied to Ophelia her entire life, so she never had an opportunity to really get to know her father, to him it's like, our entire relationship was based on a lie, and she died before really having an opportunity to mend those fences, like, you know, her final words that she passed on to Madison to pass on to him, like, they never got to have that conversation, you know, and so for, um, for Daniel, this community represented an opportunity, an opportunity where everyone isn't, you know, it's like, you don't have to pretend to be not what you were, like, because that what kind of sparked all this was him pretending with Jenny, you know, it's like, oh, like, he had to pretend, like, oh, as he was cutting her hair and pretending, like, he wasn't, like, you know, actually planning and plotting and stuff like that, you know? So all of that kind of played into it. But for him, it's like this place, you don't have to pretend who you were. Like everyone acknowledges each other's past. Like you don't have to pretend like your past didn't happen. Your past did happen, but this is kind of like a fresh start for everybody. This is a, a new chance to kind of not just like be completely defined by your past, but don't completely not acknowledge it. Like this is a chance for him to actually build a, a future based off of truth and honesty rather than the lie he feels like, you know, being in Los Angeles was, you know, so... It presented a lot of really interesting elements and perspectives inside of Daniel's head about everything. But, um, you know, obviously we also learned a little bit about June's circumstances because, you know, he made uh, Morgan made it clear, like, no crossing that line. Once you come here, like he left that axe outside being like, if you uh, cross that line and don't abide by our rules, you have to get out. So that's why, like, June's not staying there anymore. She's just there when they like Grace needs or even even the um, Daniel needs and you know so I think it's kind of an interesting conversation like being had especially considering everything with June you know killing um Virginia last episode and um I guess things are a little different in Dakota's case because like well all that was kind of just you know her killing John and everything and it's just like I wish she'd at very least be apologetic about like I'm sorry I didn't mean to kill John well you know well it's like well things kind of I mean, well, your sister ended up catching the bullet for it because, I mean, technically everything was her fault. Her lies and stuff like that created circles. And, well, you know, we're not really here to get into the whole John thing, but I don't know. Obviously, because even Morgan's like, could he be faking it? And it's like, it's like, yeah, this isn't her um, area of expertise, but for June, she's seen enough people to know when someone isn't faking it. She's like, uh, Daniel, it's not, you know, so... Um, Initially, Daniel wants to just kind of leave because for him, it's like he can't be – it's not just him, his safety that he's worried about. He's about everyone else's because he brings up uh, burning down that uh, farm, you know, um, God, it's so long ago. It's the lady that uh, Nick got really close to because the whole thing about the dead, about him just kind of not – just straight up killing them, kind of being amongst them, that whole thing he was doing for a while. She's the one that kind of inspired that in him, um, her. 
that lady, like, because he ended up burning the place down to the ground. And it's like, right. That was back in season two when it happened. So, like, man, that was so damn long ago, you know? So it almost, like, you're like, wow, for that to kind of come back. Because Daniel's like, I knew I burned a place down, you know? And it's like, right, if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't remember that. Because it's like, right, it was like a one thing and one-off thing. And he's never really had a moment necessarily like that since. But that in itself should have been a precursor of, like, yeah, there's something wrong psychologically with, um... Uh, him because he was seeing his own wife the fact is that he was willing to burn the place down he almost killed himself then but he managed to kind of get away so it's just it's it's interesting like them kind of bringing that back full circle like no like that psychological stuff is still there it's always been there he's just had other stuff you know his need to survive live for Ophelia live because Ophelia isn't alive anymore because he really had nothing else to live for anymore but he wanted to live an honest life for her sake it's like it's what his daughter would have wanted and he wanted to kind of you know um keep that wish alive you know and so now you have Victor being like all right come to Lawton and it's like I pointed a gun in your face like why should I it's like I'm not doing this for your sake I'm doing this for Ophelia she wanted you to live an honest life so you can we'll look after you we'll, we'll take care of you which even Morgan's like can you be trusting he's like why does everyone keep questioning me like it's like he's like because the man literally pointed out a gun in your face uh Victor so I have the right to ask the question whether or not you're actually going to keep up your end of the deal and he's like yes I will you know it's almost like Victor's almost like, why? Do, uh, I'm tired of you all questioning my loyalty. It's like, if you weren't the constantly flip-flopping person that you were, people would be a little more trusting of you. But it's like, it could for because the only person who knows what's in Victor's heart is Victor. You know, um, no one else will ever know Victor the way Victor, well, Daniel can kind of, you know, see through Victor because it's like, you've always been this selfish person. It's like, because that's why he was so suspicious of Victor too, because it's like, well, what did they offer you? He's like, I'm trying to figure out who they are as well. Like I said, it's just so interesting that this is more so an insight into Daniel, but it also brought about a lot of insight in this group. Of It proved just how much that distrust was, that everything Daniel did do, like on some level in his mind, he was trying to protect everyone, even though he was confused. He was send, trying to send Grace and Charlie someone because he thought he was sending them to like the cabin or whatever, but he ended up sending them to the wrong place because he was confused. He took the weapons away because he thought, you know, he didn't want them to kind of get used. And, you know, so it's like, that's the question. Did he sit like the the dynamite? Was that him? Like, could that have been like the thing that set everything off? Could like when the dynamite went off, like could have like rang something in his head? Like at what point did Daniel kind of like do all this without him realizing it, you know? So he says his goodbyes to Charlie and, you know, goes off the lot with uh, Victor and everything. It's just, it's just interesting to think about. But prior to this, what's a conversation with everybody, you know, deciding to go their separate ways? You know, it's like, you know, back to Lawton, back to the others. And then, you know, Dakota kind of speaks up about like, well, she had said, she's like, Jenny had said that they might have gone underground. I thought she meant that figuratively, like they were laying low. But she's like, what if they, what if Jenny actually meant that literally in that sense that they have like an underground facility or whatever? They're still not tying this together to the keys because maybe Virginia's the only one who knows that. Because they did say, like, oh, we want the key. And even like, you know, Morgan, after he had killed those guys that were after Eli's key, Emil's key was like, What's this all about? So I guess he still hasn't 100% correlated that together. Um, whatever the hell that's about. Um, who was it? Al went out with, I think it was Alicia. Hell, even, I love even that line of Victor being like, did Alicia, oh, where's Alicia? It's like, yeah, she went out with Al. It's like, did she know I was coming? And Morgan didn't really give an answer, but it was kind of heavenly implying like, oh, he did. And he was, she, she was just trying to avoid him. They're, you know, they're not in the best place anymore, which is sad because they have like, they're the only, they're the closest connection they kind of have because Alicia and, you know, uh, Strand have been together since, I don't know, since, obviously, since the boat, like, since that's, since season one, near the end of season one, it's like, they've been together since then, so it's like, they're kind of like the only connections they have with each other, but maybe that's also the issue, at least in Strand's case, because Alicia and him have been through so much, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that that's what kind of makes him not want to be around her so much, because she is the person that could sway him because he could so easily be a better person with her around and for him it's like I need to not be a better person to do what's necessary type of thing you know so 
a lot of interesting things went down in this episode. Like I said, just I'm curious to ultimately see uh, where um, all this ends up taking us. Because obviously, once again, we're continuing the conversation about uh, those people. Because it's like, yeah, they were in a relatively close enough area that it's like, yeah, it's still an issue that we all need to kind of come together. You know, um, Wes leaves with i think luciana to go meet up with al and um alicia because it's like let's meet up with them find out if we can find anything underground about these people and if we do we'll all come back together because we all need to make this decision together on like how to advance and potentially how to deal with these people and you know figure out who they are what they want you know so i'm really interested to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode but really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.